Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you how to build a shopping list and price tracker using Notion. Especially now that the holiday season is coming closer, this could be the perfect thing for Black Friday, Christmas shopping, or tracking any big purchases you may have. If this is helpful, it would help us out a lot if you could subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. So let's dive right in. First, let's start with an empty Notion page and we're going to title this shopping slash price list tracker and let's choose an icon that matches this theme by going to icons and shopping and you're welcome to choose a cover photo if you'd like we'll omit it this time but you can just click add cover and then change cover and then go either gallery upload link or unsplash for a huge library of stock images and we're just going to go with empty page now and we're going to click the top three dots here and do small text full width just so that we have more space on the page. And for this shopping and priceless tracker, we're going to have two main database. So one for products and one for an actual priceless tracker. So this is especially useful if you have big purchases where you want to compare prices and just do a comparison. So this is not so much for simple shopping lists, but more for big purchases like TVs, electronics, or even just really expensive gifts that you might want to track your prices for. So let's make a gallery view database by typing slash gallery. And we're going to click plus new database and we're going to title this products. So this is where all of your products are going to go. And underneath that, we're going to have a table view database by typing slash table and table view. And we're going to do plus new database here. And we're going to call this our price tracker. So in order to create this, let's go from deciding on a product and then we're going to fill in the price tracker. And then gradually this template is going to come together. So let's say that we're in the market for a new air fryer. So we can go here first and we can fill this in with the type of air fryer that we're looking for. So if we go to Google Chrome and let's say that we're looking for this Ninja air fryer. So we can do just like this and we can put this into our notion as the title. And we can even add a color photo which reflects this product. So we can do change cover and we can add it as a link. So if we go back here, we can do control click and then copy image address. And we can go to Notion, paste in the link. And now we have the picture here. We want to delete the inside like this. And let's remove this property created. And we could keep tags, for example, this is for kitchen. So maybe you want to organize your products by tags. And the other thing we can do is a checkbox about whether or not we bought this item. So we could do checkbox and purchased. So then you know whether or not you've purchased this item. So if we go out here, and now we don't see the photos. So what we need to do is go to the three dots here, layout, and then we want to choose page preview to cover. And then we want to click fit image. So we see the whole picture inside. And now we have it here. So the next thing we need to do is if we're shopping for this, we're likely going to look at multiple stores and compare its prices. So Let's start putting inside this price tracker. So first we can put this one we already have open. So if we just copy the title like this and we just put it in here. In this case, we don't really need tag, so we're gonna delete this property. And what we really need to do is add a relation. So the relation is going to link to the products and we're gonna show on products for now so that we can keep track of everything. And let's choose here this air fryer like this. And then what we need to do is have a URL property so that we can store the link as well as the store. So this will be a multi-select like this and we can name it store. And this one was Amazon, so we can put Amazon. And for the URL, we can just simply 
click here and go to paste in like this. And the most important thing would be price and that's a number property. And number format, we'll put it in US dollar and we'll call this price. And let's check the price. So this is 119.99. So if we go here, 119.99 like this, you can get the price. And then another thing that could be useful, especially as the sales season comes, is when the sales is over. So if this is the price and it ends at a certain date, you might want to show that date. So we could do date and sales end date. So just in case you want to track that. And then finally, we can also put a checkbox on whether or not you bought this. So bought. And then we can put this a little bit closer over here so you can see it. And now we have the name of the product bought and then it's tagged to the product database, the URL, the store, the price and potential sales end date. And let's add another one here. So let's say now we're checking on Best Buy. So we could go to Google Chrome, then to this Best Buy page for the same air fryer. So we can just copy this, go to Notion, paste it in, and we can add this link as this air fryer. And then the URL, we can copy that, put it in our Notion. And now here we're going to put it as Best Buy. And let's choose the same color here. And then the price on Best Buy was also 119.99. So it's the same. 119.99 and there's no sales end date so it looks like this so the next thing we need to do is that we need to show this price tracker inside of our product so if we click here we'll see that we want to add it in here so in order to do that what would be the best thing to do would be to add it as a template so that every new product is going to have this inside of the product so if we go here and then plus new template we can do product template and we can do a linked view of this database by typing slash linked view and we can link it to our price tracker and filter it by going here we can filter it by this product template save for everyone and something we can do is hide this database title so that it looks a bit cleaner. So we can go to layout and then toggle off show database title. And then we can also add some notes here in case you want to track some notes. So we can do slash heading three and notes and then slash divider. And then if you want to add bullet points, you can do with a dash and a space and then control command D to multiply these. And alternatively, if you want to add web bookmarks, you can do slash web and add some web bookmarks like this. So now we can go back and let's set this as a default template. So we go to the three dots here, set as default for all views and products. And now if we go inside here, we can click product template. And it's going to show the products like this. So this is exactly what we wanted to see. And we can hide the price tracker here so that it looks a bit better. So show as and minimal. And now another thing that would be nice is if we can see some of those properties on the outside. So if we go to the three dots here, then we can go to properties and then we can show purchased and tax like so. And if you want to get fancier, you can add multiple filters here. For example, if you just wanna see kitchen items that are on your shopping list, and you can even filter your price tracker as well based on sales end date and so on. So the possibilities for this is quite limitless. So you just need to mold it the way that you want. And finally, if we wanted to make this a little bit nicer in terms of how it looks, we could do slash heading three and products and slash divider like this. And we can remove the database title by going to layout and then toggle off show database title. And then we can do the same here slash heading three and call this price tracker and slash divider. 
and then we can remove the database title here as well. So that's the basics of creating a shopping and price list tracker using Notion. We hope that this was useful for you. We'll leave the completed version of this template in the description below. And if you have any comments, questions, or anything that was confusing in this video, feel free to let us know. And we hope to see you in the next one.